Now the Puppet Pin tool is quite an impressive tool in After Effects. It can be used as an alternative to character rigging and it's quite fun to use and it gives you impressive results. There are a couple of things that you need to consider before you start using the Puppet Pin tool and one of them is whatever that you want to animate with the Puppet Pin tool has to be on a transparent background or it has to be isolated as a single object or if it has a background you have to isolate it from the background so for example i have this uh, image right here so what i'm going to do first is import this to photoshop isolate the subject here and create a background and that is pretty easy as you can see right now i'm using photoshop 2024 first i'll have to duplicate this layer and then i'm going to deactivate the bottom layer so i can just work on this top layer right take the object selection tool which is right here and i'm going to draw a rectangle here on the subject now this object selection tool uses ai to detect what i'm trying to select so it's going to do some processing and as you can see right here it has selected now i can select the negative space but also i can select the positive so i'm going to select the positive space here come to select inverse and i'm going to delete i do only have and i'm going to try to zoom in here some details here are missing just select the layer uh, take the magic wand tool and click here on the negative space now what i'm going to do because i have selected outside my subject i'm going to select it inverse again so i have my select uh, subject selected now the second selection is quite perfect because we have already isolated the background so it's pretty easy i'm going to take this eraser tool and by default if you click and hold and drag around you can see i will erase what i'm going to do is increase the size of the brush i'm going to hold alt which is going to make my brush negative and then once I start painting, it's going to bring back all the details that was missing. Now, the second part is I want to create a background which has no subject in it. So I will create a rectangle here with the object selection tool. And uh, I'm going to select this. Once the selection is on, I'm going to delete. Now, I'm not going to actually do a generative fill right away. What I'm going to do is take the pen tool, just cut around here, right click on my um, path here and make selection and okay and then i'm going to delete now the next thing i'm going to do is come to edit generative fill why did i not generate inside the mask that i created first because if i did that it would have tried to create some sort of figure with the deleted uh, subject so because the subject now is away it's going to try to fill the background with the sky and that's what I'm, I'm looking for so I'm not going to type in anything here because once you type anything it's going to process and it's going to put that with the power of AI I'm just going to generate with a blank prompt which is going to automatically fill the gap that I have right here so as you can see all these options here are almost identical so i will just delete these two i'm left with this one right click on this generative fill layer and then i'm going to merge it down now you can see we have this outline here on the background i'm going to just heal this real quick with the heal spot healing brush tool and that's it if you had a PNG file, you didn't have to go through all this process. We have this subject right here, which we are going to animate with the Puppet Pin tool, but also we do have the background right here. I will go ahead and save this and then uh, get rid of this. I already have After Effects opened up right here. Adobe softwares do interact with one another. You can do work in Photoshop, get it into After Effects, Premiere, Illustrator to After Effects. They all interact so you don't need to actually export your images to work with it in After Effects. So that's what I'm going to do too. I'm going to take this PSD file, take it straight into After Effects and um, it's going to pop up here a window if you allow it to merge layer styles into footage it will just import as this one single layer but i don't want that i want the editable layer so i can get two layers as i worked them in uh, photoshop so editable layer styles and then here on the import kind you have footage you have composition and you have composition 
retain layer size so i will take composition and i wanted to retain the layer sizes as i i, I did in photoshop uh, the same resolution that was in photoshop i want the comp size to be similar so i'm gonna press ok right now and if i double click on this composition right you can see we do have here and yes i i did not uh, activate this and you can see it came unactivated so we can just put it right back like this so let's use the puppet pin tool and you can find it right here on this icon the puppet position pin tool or shortcut control p if you click and hold you see you have other tools in the puppet pin tool you have the puppet position pin tool you have the puppet touch pin tool puppet bend pin tool puppet advanced pin tool and puppet overlap pin tool i'm going to take first the puppet position pin tool make sure your your subject layer is selected which is this the first one here so i'm going to select this and apply a pin uh, right about here now if you click on this pin you can see you can move this around this is not the animation we are looking for why because the pin actually works as if you're pinning a piece of paper if for example this is your pin this is your paper right this is what we are working with if you put a pin right on top like here and if you try to move this paper it will swing so if you don't want it to swing you maybe put another pin on the bottom here so the the concept works the same if i put a pin down here you can see now if i move this top pin it will swing around so that's the concept that we are working with because this is a human character or human subject that we are working with i'm going to apply the pins to where the joints are so on the wrist i'm going to put another pin here on the elbow and on the shoulder so when i move the wrist it will it will bend it will have a pin that holds a position on the elbow i'll add another pin right here i'll add another pin right here okay i'll also add another pin right here on the knee i'll delete this pin you can always go back and change your pin so don't worry about that i'll put a pin right here i'll put a pin right here and right here now the trick that i like uh, doing after i have all my pins in position is to try to move them around and and see if it actually looks natural if i click and hold here and bend this arm i want to see it bend like this like he wants to dunk and this is right now it it is stretchy and rubbery but we'll fix that we are going to work on making it more stiff and that is where the puppet touch pin tool comes in place because i know the wrist is not going to bend from this position right if i add a pin right here and try to move it around it won't be so stretchy as before i'll put some touch points on the chest touch points here yeah all those areas that i don't want them to uh bend right now if let me say i move this you can see if i move this it's it's not so stretchy if you don't see this net kind of overlay on our object or subject here that's because your mesh is not activated it's not showing so just make sure you have this mesh option showing here also you can actually in increase the expansion or if it was expanding like this you can make it I, I like to keep it zero you can increase here the density and uh and choose how heavy you want your mesh to be the more value increases on the density the more details you are going to see on your mesh so i like to keep it just around five so i'm going to deactivate the mesh right now once the hand goes back i want to see this ball slightly rotate if i put this hand down here i also want to see the wrist kind of bend a little so if we add a puppet bend pin tool here you can actually bend your subject here as you can see i'll put one here i'll put one here i'll put one on the shoe and i'll put another on this shoe right here so let's start animating this first of all i, I want my composition just to be five seconds so i'm going to go to composition settings and on duration here i'm going to type five 500 and that will make it five seconds in total so we only have five seconds to 
work with here and if you select your layer and type in u on your keyboard it will actually open up all the keyframes that are on this layer which they have been automatically placed once you place a pin on your subject so we have all the pins here the first recording option is automatic so control hold and then if i click it will automatically start animating so if you go and check you'll see you have different keyframes here that have been automatically placed as it was playing here so if you play back you can see the animation starts it's a bit weird but we're gonna fix that the second option is we are going to go to the end of uh, the timeline here and then we are going to do the animation how we want our animation to be so what I want is uh, to change this hand move it a bit back then I'm gonna you know, change this and I'm going to move this hand down here I'm going to move this foot down here and I'm going to move also this this leg here so I'm going to bend the, the wrist here a bit I'm going to bend the wrist here I'm going to bend this foot and also I'm going to bend this foot right and automatically our keyframes will be you can see we have keyframes here on the end of the of the timeline here we have all these keyframes here on the uh, pins that were adjusted so right now if i get back okay and play this back you can see we have this animation What's left now is just to animate this uh, movement of him coming down. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to pre-compose this top layer that has the pins. Move all attributes to the new composition, press OK, and then open up the position and scale to by clicking on my keyboard, P Shift S. I'm going to the end of my uh, timeline, activate the stopwatch, then come to the beginning here and do a bit of animation. So I'm going to move my subject down here and now if we play it back move him a bit here and i think in the end i'm going to scale down him a bit so to make it seem like he was jumping a bit higher let's see how this works if you are still here watching this video you're in for a treat because i'm not only going to explain the last two tools in the puppet pin but also i'm going to show you how you can pair your pins with the null object we have the puppet advanced pin tool but also we have the puppet overlap now the puppet advanced pin tool is simply a pin that contains the position the scale and the rotation properties so if you select the advanced pin tool and let's say i place it right over here you can see on the middle here you have this cross icon which allows you to actually position uh, this pin anywhere you want but also if you hover outside this circle okay you can see we have this rotation icon which allows you to actually rotate this pin and on this box right here you'll have a scale icon which means you can actually scale your pin this is similar to what we were working before with the position pin tool and with the bend pin tool but just combined together in this one advanced pin tool when we talk about the overlap pin it's actually the pin that allows us to place an object above of another for example if i select a pin right here and a pin right here and then let me just put two pins over here if i move this leg you can see it goes over the other leg on the back but let's say that we wanted this leg on the back right to be over the this leg on the front we actually use the puppet overlap pin tool okay now to see how this works we actually need to activate the mesh okay now i'm going to zoom in here and i'm going to select the overlap tool okay and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on my mesh and make sure i shade over this mesh on the surface area that i want to cross over the other leg so if i place a pin right here you can see it shades out 
our mesh here and everything that's going to be shaded is actually going to uh, overlap so with shade here this leg and now if I go back and take this puppet pin tool and uh, move this you can see now this leg can go uh, over this but if uh, we go over a place that has not been shaded you can see it goes behind that's just for reference okay the only part that will go over is the part that has the mesh shaded with the overlap uh, pin tool now what if you want to pair your puppet pin into a null object and you don't want to go down into the keyframes and start adjusting one by one well the first thing you need to consider is you need to make sure every single object that you want to animate is on a separate layer it means every single object will have one pin because i've tried i uh, put in a couple of pins and it just got messed up for example on what we have been working on if you want to do that you actually have to separate the hands you know into separate different layers and try to uh, pair them each one into a null a specific null object but since this is just for reference i'm just going to show you in this one image right so i'm going to first pre-compose this okay this is a new composition and we took our layer here our object layer we went to press ctrl shift c and pre-compose this move all attributes into a new composition then i'm going to take the puppet pin right here and place it for example right here okay now we have our pin right now the next thing you want to do is go to the anchor point and select the anchor point on your object and place it where the pin is so for example right here this is very important now what you want to do is go to new and create a new null object now this is null one now go back to your layer open it up go to mesh go to deform and open puppet pin and you will see here you have the position option if we had a bend pin or have an advanced pin you will have rotation and scale properties which you can actually pin them similarly as what we are going to do right now now what you want to do click and hold alt on your keyboard go to the position of the puppet pin okay and click on the stopwatch this will open up the expression settings on your layer come here on the null object open the position properties take the pick whip and uh, pair it on the position right now when you go back here it's positioned on this null object now you can actually uh use this null object to uh move this around using the pin okay so if you're actually doing character rigging and the character contains multiple layers and each multiple layer is of an individual object let's say if it's a hand the wrist is separate the forearm is separate and the, the shoulders are separate what you actually do is you create three different null objects and you actually parent each null object or the different object and by that you wouldn't have to go back to the positions the pins here which are way inside the menu but you can just uh, animate everything on the null object and that's it for today's video thank you guys for watching i'm glad you enjoyed this video make sure you leave a like subscribe and share it to your friends if it's helpful and remember as always go out there and create something awesome